Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Monday, January 11th, 2021 meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. Uh, could we start off with the roll call, Deb? Chairman Garvin? Here. Councilor Boucher? Here. Councilor Devereaux? Here. Councilor Gabrielson? Here. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Here. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Here. Councilor Noonan? Here. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum. Thank you so much. Um, could you all please join me in rising for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Um, Right here at the top, before we get onto the um, rest of our regular agenda, I just wanted to take a few moments to um, reflect a bit on the events that occurred in Washington last week. Um, like so many, we were shocked and appalled uh, and deeply saddened watching the violent and anti-democratic acts that transpired. And to see a riotous mob, some clearly espousing extremist, racist, and anti-Semitic views occupy the Capitol seeking to interrupt the democratic process and attempt to overturn the results of a free and fair election was something few could imagine, even amidst the hyper-partisan environment that envelops the nation and our government today. First and foremost, we grieve for the lives lost and those who were injured. We are grateful for the heroic actions of many that prevented more tragic and potentially catastrophic outcomes. And we were encouraged to see the work of the Congress continue unabated once order had been restored. What happened last week has been universally condemned and we unequivocally join in that response. I wanted to also offer though, an additional and slightly more personal perspective. Just an hour or so after the Capitol building had been cleared and secured, the town council met for its regularly scheduled workshop. On the agenda were the updates to the short-term rental ordinance we've been working on for the last couple of months, something that while clearly on a completely different level has generated a fair amount of disagreement and tension among our community and us as counselors. It struck me that evening and Councillor Devereaux referred to it in the moment about what a stark contrast and just juxtaposition it was to what we had witnessed earlier in the day. We all take tremendous pride in serving the community as town councilors. We strive to model civic leadership and civil discourse. Even when we disagree, we do so with respect and a foundational trust that each person's opinion and position is rooted in facts and a desire to do what they think is right on behalf of our citizens. So while it may sound naive to think that how we conduct our business here can have any impact amidst the turmoil and turbulent times like the ones we find ourselves in, it is the very least that we can do. And so it is in that spirit that we as a council reaffirm our commitment to our values and hope that even in some small way, it can make a difference. Thank you for uh, indulging me with that. Um, are there any other counselors that have any correspondence or reports at this time? Go ahead, Councillor Noonan. Thanks, and um, thank you for those uh, very well thought out words. I appreciate it, Jamie. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to report that last week I did meet with Nate Perry. He's from the Cape Elizabeth Fishermen's Alliance, and he just wanted to uh, update me being new that um, just give his perspective on their uh, their view of the history around the boat launch and the boat access and just kind of explain a little bit to me why the Fisherman's Alliance um, is interested in seeing the, the new access move forward, so. Thank you for that. Any questions for Gretchen about that? Any other reports or correspondence from anybody? Um, I'll note that there are about 15 folks in attendance right now for the meeting. Um, and with that, I'll turn it over to Councillor Gabrielson for the report of the Finance Committee. Great. Thank you, um, Jamie. Um, I'll keep it brief. Um, everything, uh, the revenues and expenses both seem to be tracking pretty well with projections. So um, that's, that's great and to be expected. Um, it's nice to see, well, not nice in terms of getting out and doing some skiing, but uh, winter's been gentle on us so far from a public works perspective. So 
um, tracking a little bit ahead in some of our expense categories, which is good. Uh, any questions, I'll probably refer them on to, to Matt or Joan. Any questions for Jeremy? Penny, go ahead. Yeah, and maybe it's more for Matt. I know it might be a bit premature. Uh, and I did read a, a couple of things from the uh, Maine Municipal Association regarding uh, Governor Mills' uh, budget. Um, it looks promising so far. I don't know what your read is on it, uh, Matt and Jeremy. If, if I may, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, right now we're looking at, I think Governor Mills stated it was going to look, they were looking at 3.75%, which is an increase uh, on the revenue sharing uh, for next year. However, that is dictated by uh, sales tax re uh, receipts as well as uh, income tax uh, receipts as well. Uh, so if, you know, if the sales are down, uh, that number that number will be, you know, obviously more conservative. Uh, so we'll, we'll probably, you know, many different managers who I've been interacting with looking at this, will be tracking similar numbers to where we're at this year, uh, trying to be a bit conservative on that. But I was, I think we were all very, uh, encouraged to see that that uh, percentage was at least going up so that may help us see a positive benefit in the coming uh, in the coming fiscal 22 budget uh, they should come out with their first estimates probably mid to late february would be the first estimate they'll come out with and then they then they come out with a revised estimate later in the spring so uh, as those numbers come forward i'll uh, be sharing that with the council thank you thanks for the question any other questions for jeremy or matt uh, regarding the finance committee report. Seeing none, uh, we'll move to citizen comment for uh, anything not on tonight's agenda. So if there's anybody joining us that wishes to speak about something that's not on our agenda this evening, you're welcome to do so at this time. Just uh, use the raise hand function in the Zoom meeting and you'll be called on. Don't see any hands going up at the moment. So we'll move on to the town manager's monthly report, Matt. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to report that all town departments are working on their fiscal year 22, uh, 2022 municipal budget. So uh, all departments are, are hard at work trying to craft that and get, uh, get the budget document moving forward. I'm also happy to report that our police department and emergency medical services personnel have received the first round of COVID-19 vaccine uh, over the past couple of weeks. We anticipate that they will be receiving the second shot of the two-phase vaccination within the prescribed window. Those would be the EMTs as well as the policemen who are all EMTs as well. And then they're considered to be in uh, segment 1A and then uh, our fire responders are considered to be in 1B. So they'll be in the following uh, round from there. So. It's very encouraging to see that at this point with so many good folks who are uh, every day in, in harm's way working on that. So uh, that's a positive, a positive development uh, for sure. Last week, I received confirmation that the town was successful in our pursuit of the electric vehicle charging station grant for both of them. So huge ups on that. Uh, thank you to Richard Parker and Sam Milton. I saw Sam is on here this evening. Uh, but uh, working on that package and it, it's a $16,000 uh, or a grant of up to $16,000 or 80% of the cost of the project, if not in excess of $16,000. So we will plan on including those two stations in the upcoming capital plan. We've completed all the agreement language regarding the solar installation project and Encore Renewable Energy is working on the next phase of the project and looking to go to the planning board in the near future. Speaking of solar power, the Energy Committee will be having a community conversation through the Thomas Memorial Library on January 25th at 6.30 p.m. and that'll be on community solar projects. The Communications Tower project is also advancing with the pre-bid meeting this Thursday morning and we have received our planning board approval as well as DB, DEP review and approval, as well as a confirmation that it is not a habitat for uh, for, for rabbits up there, which is always a concern. <laughs> Finally, this Thursday evening, the town engineer, Steve Harding, Public Works Director Jay Reynolds, and myself 
and I will be holding a uh, meeting to discuss the preliminary design work on the Kettle Cove watercraft launch that Councilor Noonan was speaking about uh, er, just earlier. This is a product of the planning grant that the town received and we've notified the abutters and posted the meeting. It's anticipated to have a final presentation after this, after this informational meeting with the neighbors uh, prepared and have a final presentation prepared for the council for your February 1st workshop. So we do have that advancing as well. Uh, and that is all I have for this evening, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much and be happy to take any questions. Thanks, Matt. <clears throat> Are there any questions for the manager? If I, I had one other item, sorry, I, yep. uh, I, I forgot to write this in. Uh, we are looking to pursue a land and water conservation fund grant for uh, for that launch work in the spring. Uh, it's been identified by the state that we would be extremely competitive in that as it would improve access. So uh, very encouraged by that and trying to provide a benefit while uh, not impacting the taxpayers. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. If there are no questions for Matt on anything from his report, we'll move on in the agenda. Uh, item eight is review of the draft minutes of the meeting held on December 14th, 2020. Is there a motion? A motion to approve. Motion to approve by Councillor Boucher. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councillor Penny Jordan. Is there any discussion? Did you have a point to discuss, Penny? I thought I saw your hand. No, oh, okay. Any discussion? Seeing none, Deb, could you call the roll for the vote, please? Councilor Boucher? Yes. Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? Yes. Councilor, Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councilor Noonan? Yes. Chairman Garvin? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you. Um, uh, agenda items number 31-2021 through 33-2021 are presented uh, as a consent calendar item here. These are three uh, accounting uh, measures ef effectively uh, being recommended by the finance director for the establishment of a special purpose fund for the Thomas Memorial Library, authorization of transfer funds uh, for account series 0640 and 0660 or through 0660. Um, creating uh, basically uh, revamping the accounts uh, that fall with under those under those and then uh, the last one on uh, Fort Williams Park uses for 2021. Um, is there any objection to having all three of these be moved as a consent agenda? Jamie? Penny. Yep. Um, I'd like to discuss 32 2021. The transfer funds. Yep. Okay. Um, why don't we just go ahead and take each one individually then? Uh, okay. I think that makes sense. So we'll go with item 31 2021. Um, is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak on this item on the establishment of a special purpose fund for the Thomas Memorial Library? Uh, if so, please raise your hand. I see no hands going up. I'm going to ask uh, the finance director to give a brief introduction um, for the request here. Go ahead, John. Oh, John, we're not hearing you. I can lead in on that one, Mr. Chairman. Um, that or, yeah, go, go ahead, Matt. Then yeah. while John yeah. works out the, the uh, for, audio. For sure, for sure. This is, uh, this is an endowment or, or a gift that's been provided by the Mary Ellen Coles uh, Children's Book Fund and it's a donation of $1,000 and looking to have this, uh, it may be in the future, uh, additional annual contributions. So we're looking to establish uh, this fund uh, for that benefit to the library. John, is your audio working there now? Can you hear me? Yep, a little faint, but if you could speak up a little bit. Oh, we had you for a second and then it went away. <laughs> Did 
นะผิวบอลว่าไงวิ่งจะก่อให้เดินอ่าฉันจะหาการตัดสินใจในไอเดมมีการตัดสินใจที่จะอนุญาตให้สถาบันการค้าที่มีสิทธิ์ในการจัดการของผู้บริโภคให้สถาบันการค้าที่มีสิทธิ์ในการจัดการของผู้บริโภคให้สถาบันการค้าที่มีสิทธิ์ในการจัดการของผู้บริโภคให้สถาบันการค้าที่มีสิทธิ์ในการจัดการของผู้บริโภคให้ Seeing no discussion, uh, I'll call the question then. Deb. Councilor Boucher. Yes. Councilor Devereaux. Yes. Councilor Gabrielson. Yes. Councilor Caitlin Jordan. Councilor Penelope Jordan. Yes. Councilor Noonan. Yes. Chairman Garvin. Yes. And the motion carries. Okay. Item number 32-2021 is the authorization of transfer funds in account series 640 through 660, uh, recommending uh, uh, new general ledger uh, uh, accounts here um, and the movement of uh, multiple appropri appropriations into those accounts uh, with different controls. Uh, is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak on this item? Seeing none. Um, John, are you still having audio issues or have we got you? Still not hearing you. Okay. Maybe, maybe try without the, uh, without the headphones, John. Like unplug them. And see if the normal mic works. Gotta unplug them. Okay. Um, Matt, do you want to give a brief introduction on this then? I, I, I can as well. That uh, this is in advance of the of the beginning of the uh, budget season. Uh, what we're looking to do is try to organize the accounts uh, more in line and in the groupings. Uh, for instance, with uh, parks and grounds. Uh, which has been in the uh, in the six in the six forties and the six forty ones to put them more in line with the three hundred block, which is the public works block. Uh, so they would have those identified there. Uh, so instead of flipping back and forth when we go through the budget season, that they would be uh, all in the three in the three hundred range. And uh, so so we're looking at that. There's obviously no no new money is involved. It's really just trying to reorganize the accounts in advance of the uh, of the spring. Uh, then there is the CIP project, and that is uh, what we're looking to do is it's an annual work uh, product that's been going on with trails maintenance, but it seems like that should be more of a capital, uh, ongoing capital project listing. So it should be housed uh, more formally in the, in the 715s or the capital uh, project area, as well as if there, is, if there are funds that are left unspent, perhaps there's trail maintenance that would be taking place in June and then would follow over into July uh, this would allow us to keep that work going versus having to go through a formal carryover or a carry forward that you've had to do in the past. And if you recall, the council last spring uh, formalized that for, for capital projects to, to have a continuation. And then uh, finally, the last part would be uh, with Fort Williams Park and moving items uh, there that go to community services or uh, also to uh, uh, public works to have those funds identified. Uh, for instance, the greeters, who are part of the uh, uh, part of community services employee group uh, would now be under there, and we could we would track it as part of the uh, as part of community services budget versus having a separate item. And I know Councilor Jordan has questions uh, specific to this area, so uh, be happy to take some of those in. Hopefully, John can weigh in as well. Go ahead, Councilor Penny Jordan. Thanks for okay. that intro, Matt. You're welcome. Um, I think basically my questions have to do with um, uh, not having Fort Williams all under one um, line item. It's now spread across a, a couple of different um, departments. And, and so it's like, what is our objective here? 
um, and how do we want to operate our business? Because you align your uh, chart of accounts with how you want to operate your business. And uh, we constantly uh, think about uh, transparency and ease uh, of citizens to access information. And so if you have to go to multiple departments in order to put the full picture of Fort Williams together, um, I have a concern. Um, and so it's like, uh, it appears to me what we're doing is we are uh, um, establishing our accounts on a department by department basis versus looking at what are our larger um, dollar expenditures or where we maybe have to do problem solving. We've got a, um, a, 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 a new strategy document that'll be coming out uh, or strategic plan by Fort William. Um, and I just think that it may sound trite, but I think we need to think about whether we want to put the pieces together um, have to put them together or have them all in one place out of the chute. Um, Matt or John, if your mic is working, any response to that? Okay. I was, I was waiting, uh, I was waiting yeah. to see if John, if John could, could chime in. Uh, I, yeah, I, I understand uh, what uh, Councillor Jordan has, uh, is, is looking at as well. And it, it's a little bit of a challenge to try to, you know, we will be able to track everything that we have for Fort Williams, but I do understand her thought as far as uh, trying to have that all accessible for one uh, direct item there, uh, you know, Fort Williams Park specifically and have those all housed in one spot. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good question. It's more of a, uh, you know, it's been a recommendation uh, from John to do that with trying to find an ease of way to, to try to get those in their cost centers that they've been, you know, that, they, they, that they've been allocated to and uh, working on that budget, trying to make it a little bit more, I guess, more housed where they, where they generally have been paid out of, uh, for lack of a better way to describe it. Go ahead, Councilor Devereaux. Well, um, my question is, how long have we been doing it this way um, with Fort Williams as um, one big group? And I, I'm guessing for a very long time, is that right? Yeah, the, the four part is correct. The second part would be ever. Uh, I think uh, what you're looking at is, uh, as you know, and as, as we've gone through uh, creating the different accounts, I think as over the years, as you've added a new account, it's been added into uh, we've, we've got the 300s, we've got the 400s, and then as Fort Williams became a, a budget entity, it went into the 600 accounts. So as they've been created, you create a grouping for that and then subgroups within that. So I think that's how that was, was created back, you know, low so many years ago. So uh, just looking at it through a different set of eyes now and trying to find ways that, that may work better towards organizing the, uh, the expenditures. Go ahead, Penny. The other thing that well, actually, hold on, Valerie. Did that answer your Sorry. question? Or were you going to ask a follow up? Sorry, I, didn't well, I was just I was just going to um, say thank you, but I'd I'd really like to hear what John has to say because I have to agree with Penny. I like the idea of it all being in one place where people anyone can look at it and see these are the expenses for Fort Williams, and as unless John has some really compelling reason, I I like it. Just seems more transparent to me. Can I interrupt before we move forward on it? Is there, does action needed to be taken on this tonight? Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think uh, you and I are, are, are standing in the same pew at the moment. Uh, it may be wise to, uh, when we can work through these audio uh, issues to, to table this item and bring it forward for next month. And then uh, and during that time period, we can work uh, with John and get his audio uh, items uh, completed. So uh, if, if okay. that would work. I, I I move that we table this item. Is there a second? I can't hear you, Jamie. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yep. I said I, I move that we table this item. Can I so, say one more thing before we do that? Sure. 
only just food for thought as the, you move forward. The other thing to consider is that when you start parking human resource people underneath a department such as community services, you're going to start to create pressure. Even though the line item within uh, community services may be um, uh, part-time resources for Fort Williams, you start seeing that budget from a, a human resource perspective go up, you're gonna start asking questions about it. So the more you put things together, the more opportunity you have to create questions that you might not want to have put forth. So now I move to table it. Um, I see what you did there with parking, by the way. Um, <laughs> uh, so motion to table the item from uh, Councilor Penny Jordan, is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Councilor Devereaux. So uh, motion to put on the table. We'll take that up at our meeting next month then. Um, John, sorry for the technical snafu, but um, we'll, we'll get it worked out and uh, we'll, we'll revisit this next month. Thank you. Thanks for your work to bring it forward and uh, for being part of the meeting. Um, so next up is item number 33-2021. Uh, Fort Williams Park uses for 2021. Is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak on this item? I don't see any hands going up. Um, and we've got about 22 folks in the audience just for a check. Um, so uh, before us in the agenda are multiple group use requests. Um, per our policy, uh, it's the council's responsibility to approve these recommendations. Uh, they are all, uh, they were all recommended for use by the Fort Williams Park Committee. Is there a motion to approve the group uses that have been brought forward? So moved. Motion by, motion by Councilor Noonan, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilor Gabrielson, is there any discussion? Councillor Penny Jordan. I just want to make one point, and it's probably an obvious point, but we are approving this based under the assumption that gatherings such as this can occur. Just want to make sure that that is recognized. Correct, and thank you for the point of emphasis. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, uh, Deb, could you call the roll, please? Councilor Boucher? Yes. Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? Yes. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councilor Noonan? Yes. Chairman Garvin? Motion carries. Thank you so much. Um, item number 34-2021 is short-term rental amendments, uh, ordinance amendments and uh, followed by the next item after that, comprehensive plan amendment recommendations. Um, I'm gonna ask if there's anybody from the public that wishes to speak on this, but I first just wanna clarify because we did receive um, some emails and um, some folks uh, had a chance to respond to, others that came in today, I did not. Um, but um, number one, both of these items on the agenda this evening, following the workshop meeting that we had last week, are effectively procedural steps to advance this uh, uh, these items to a public hearing at our council meeting next month, uh, Monday, February 8th. So um, the intent is not to uh, get into discussion or debate tonight necessarily about um, the merits of the draft of the ordinance or um, particulars of the issue uh, necessarily, but rather to just decide on whether to refer to a public hearing at the public hearing, we would obviously have um, uh, as much public comment on the item uh, as the public wants to have. So um, hope that number one clarifies that point about what each of these are. And I know some people were asking why there was public comment scheduled for these tonight, if that was the case. And just um, to, to clarify that point, we 
as is uh, our, our policies, we have public comment before every agenda item, an opportunity for public comment before every agenda item uh, at every meeting. Um, so that's number one. Number two is there seem to be some um, misunderstanding or lack of clarity around what actually was decided or I don't even want to use the word decided because the nature of a workshop is just for you know having a discussion and dialogue about um, about an item. Um, but there there weren't any um, there was no consensus uh, from from a majority of the council in that workshop uh, to make any changes uh, to the current draft, the current red line draft of the ordinance, which is what we're looking to move forward to the public hearing for next month. So there were some addendum recommendations that came back from the planning board. There were some other points of discussion that were um, spoken around, but by and large, um, not by and large, in, in totality, the, uh, the edited version of the ordinance itself that came back from the planning board is what the council uh, will be voting on momentarily uh, to put forward to the public hearing. So I, again, just wanted to clarify that because it seemed like there were some people who participated in or listened to the meeting, um, but weren't, weren't sure um, in spite of some back and forth discussion where, where things netted out on some of those things. So with that all being said, um, I will at this point open up if there's anybody from the public that wishes to speak on the item. And again, with the reminder that the item is on whether or not to refer the ordinance to a public hearing for Monday, February 8th. Is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak on this? Uh, I see the hand of James King. I assume it's um, Mrs. King. Uh, so, uh, Ms. King, uh, when Matt opens up your mic, you can go ahead. And if you could just give us your name and address again. Thanks. Of course. Go ahead. Am I unmuted? Yes, You're, good. You're good. We go. hear you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. How are you? Um, well, I kind of wonder if we're, after a full year, I wonder if we're really, you know, ready for it to go to the public because it seems like a some very important things changed last week. And, and when I left the meeting, I thought, what happened? <laughs> you know, some of the counselors almost seemed to be talking about the fact that they were hosted and unhosted and they had different roles. And then when I looked at it all, the, the only point that I saw is this last one um, that I think was unfair because it was in the last five minutes. And, and something very important changed, particularly for me. You know, it's, it's, it's been about a, a whole year from the very beginning and it seemed like what we were focusing on was, Jamie, tell me if I'm on the, um, the right road here. But it seemed like the focus and what we really wanted to do was to restrict out of towners from buying property to limit the number of rentals so that our, the, the nature of the town didn't change too much. Uh, creating a permit process so we could follow people and um, you know protect the visitors, make sure that the homes were safe, et cetera, and then creating consequences because there had been irresponsible folks. I know that your intention was not to um, overburden the police with coming out to see, you know, uh, to check on silly things, you know, silly, annoying things, you know, people smoking outside and all that stuff. Um, so I know that you don't want to overregulate and Get involved in minutia, etc. But in the last five minutes, a a point that I think is going to be a problem came up, which is saying that a minimum of seven days had to be for each rental. Um, I cannot imagine that you're going to send out the police to my house and say, Deborah, you've had two people this week in your house. You know, give me a fine, or 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 that. Um, you know, our code enforcer is going to be looking at, you know, the calendar of Scott down the street and seeing that he hasn't fulfilled that need. That seems like minutia and a, and a, um, a problem that doesn't need to be solved. Um, you know, I like to say, 
Um, I always I kid my husband that he's sleeping with the cleaning lady because, you know, it's not like we have cleaners come in when you're a homestay. You do that stuff yourself. I know that was brought up as a point that could be a problem. <laughs> People coming and going. And of course, in some homes, no one sees them. So my point is simply that I think that that thing that was added last minute that in this whole year of discussion was not talked about. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't, it seems premature to put that in last minute for something that needs to be presented to the public in a short time. Thank you very much for your comments. Appreciate um, you keeping them um, to the three minutes too, which I forgot to mention. Um, so I, I just wanna offer up just a real quick response because I, I think it, 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 um, it's in need of some clarification. Number one um, is there are multiple things that go to a public hearing and still change after the fact. So just because something is being sent to a public hearing, it doesn't mean that no changes can or, or will take place to anything that's in the language. Um, in particular, that's the reason you have a public hearing is to continue to, to, to hear input from folks and um, take that in, under advisement. Number two, I, I think both Ms. King Yu and a, a few others have um, made the point, use the language of something that got added at the last minute. And I, I just want to clarify that I, I don't think that that accurately represents um, the facts the, um, and, and just um, clarify also about the seven day um, uh, sort of clause to which you're referring. So the first is that it's not requiring that stays be for a minimum of seven days. It's saying that you can only have one, um, uh, you, you can only have one booking within a seven day period. So whether that person stays there for one day or seven days, um, it effectively counts as your one stay for that window. And, uh, and then you, 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 there's, there's a, a quote unquote resting period, if you will, in between um, when, the, when that person checks out uh, to when the, when the next stay would be uh, eligible to come in. Um, this has been a component of the unhosted short-term rentals. And as you said, has not been a component of the hosted stays. Um, but also um, has is language that's carried through, um, you know, I, I think through multiple iterations in the process, and, and it might not have just gotten the focus or attention and discussion, um, or it, it maybe flown under the radar a little bit. So um, I just want to, I don't want people to think that it was some last minute change that was jammed through without discussion or anything like that. So. Um, and the idea is that the, um, the uh, third party software would be able to identify if operators were booking multiple, um, multiple stays within a seven day window. So um, it's not that the police are gonna have to be doing any of that monitoring. The idea is that that monitoring would come as a function um, of the data analytics platform. So, um, Penny, did you want to add something? I do, because um, I think that that, that seven day is, um, is represented in two places. And, um, and one of them is under the minimum length of stay, which is exactly what you were talking about, Jamie, is the intent of that. But the other one is at the top of page eight, where it talks about um, that advertising would be for a minimum period of seven days. If you read that explicitly, um, black and white, it can be interpreted in a way that is what is creating angst for people. So I just want to throw that out that it'll come out at public hearing, then we can uh, unravel it, but yep. uh, and I appreciate that. Um, it, it does seem like something that needs to be cleaned up just a little bit um, so that mm -hmm. the language matches the intent. What I mm -hmm. wanted to do was just try and clarify what I know, you know, from the work of the ordinance committee and, and what, what the our previous, intention was. and also <laughs> what the, what the previous um, clause in the, in the existing ordinance um, uh, speaks to. So, um, so hopefully that clarifies that, um, 
Mrs. King, if, if you wanted to have a quick response to that um, before I move on, there's another hand raised, but I see your hand is back up and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to hear from you again, if you just have a real brief response to that. So I push on you. Yeah, my, my point is just, just what Penny said. What I read is section 19.814, and that said you had to advertise that it was a minimum of seven days. Of course, that would hurt us. The other thing that you know is that um, if I invited, uh, you know, you your free vacation next year is seven days to be at Deborah King's Airbnb in a bedroom. Uh, you wouldn't do that. I mean, it, to those of us who are welcoming people into our home, they, people only want to be here a couple of days. They rent a cottage. They rent an unhosted home, you know, where a host isn't there. That's the one point. The second one is, I think in the end, what you guys haven't done yet is these folks who have primary residences, but they're not there. You still haven't done it. I think anything to make sure those places are supervised, but that's another subject. My subject simply is that by telling me I can only rent once in a week, you are vastly changing my life and my income. And I know you're trying to prevent a problem, but you also know that hosted Airbnbs are not a problem. So you're giving us a restriction that is going to change our lives that is not going to fulfill your goals. Okay. And so what Ms. we're King, asking gonna... is for you to have mercy on us and to change it so that'll work for us. And of course it'll work for you because we aren't going to be a problem for anyone. Thank you very much. I'm gonna leave that comment there and just, um, I, I assume we'll probably hear that from you again at the public hearing. Um, next week or next month rather so um the next um next uh person in the queue is english meadows could you give us your name and address please uh, it's david, open? david parisi it's not actually english meadows we just signed it <laughs> years ago go ahead uh, go ahead mr parisi. we were innkeepers and we're now at 503 ocean house road so my question is what is the purpose of limiting rentals to or you know limiting rentals to seven days is it because you have you think you have less activity on the property and i don't know if you answer questions while i'm speaking or not um i'll i'll, I'll just provide a quick answer the the discussion and intent of the of the clause is to try and limit the impact on residential neighborhoods by limiting the turnover and um, sort of number of guests that are coming and going. So uh, the thinking being that if you, um, you know, have somebody operating a short-term rental, that's, you know, that activity is curtailed by, by not having, you know, if you had no restriction on it, then theoretically every night, you know, you could have new guests arriving, previous guests leaving, all, all, the, all the like, so. But, well, we, we have a two night minimum, so we could have maybe three turnovers in a week. Um, so you have somebody coming in in the evening. In the morning, they typically go out for breakfast and they're out all day and they come back, have a little nap and then go out for dinner. And we don't see them again until the next day. But what's the difference between that and my neighbors who have three teenagers and all three of them have cars. So that means they have five automobiles and they all come and go continuously day and night. Are you next going to restrict those people to not have all this coming and going? Keep going, keep going. Okay, you're not gonna answer that right now. Right. You, you can think about that. I, I'm so, not interested tonight in getting into the again, as much of the merits of the item because that's what the public hearing is gonna be for, but- um... So we'll bring this up again then. But the seven, the seven day minimum really, for the most part, it cuts our rentals in half for a year. So at that point, it's, it may not be net, you know, worthwhile to do it, but I think we're offering a service to the community because we have a lot of people who stay here um, who have family in the area. We've had a number recently, they walk to their parents' house, but they don't want to stay there, especially because of COVID or the parents don't have room. 
and we have we have families who come for a couple days because they're bringing their um, high school students to visit colleges. So we're, these are not people who want to stay at Inn by the Sea. Although, and I, I don't know if they have, will they have the same restriction of the seven days? I'm not sure. But we have um, people who come for a day or two, they wouldn't stay a week if they're visiting their children at camp because they only get to see them for a weekend. So we're providing this short-term rental for a lot of people who, who need it for very specific reasons and for short term. Anyway, this, mm -hmm. the seven day restriction really greatly affects us. Um, we used to be innkeepers. We like, we enjoy having guests. You had guests from all over the world, which is the same as here and will also harm us financially. We purchased the property two years ago and started um, after meeting with Ben, started renting once we did the renovations and put a fair amount of money into the property. And that could be my time. So in any case, okay. this is a real detriment to us. Thank you for, thank your, you for your comments. Yep, thank you for your comments. Are there others that wish to speak at this point? I don't see any hands raised. I'll give it just another second in case anybody's thinking about offering comments. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, is, uh, Scott, go ahead. Um, uh, Matt, I'll open your mic in just a second. Name and address, please. I believe I am unmuted. Yes, sir. yes, go ahead. Great. Uh, Scott Rockwell, 119 Old Ocean House Road. And um, thank you for acknowledging a bunch of the um, letters that we have sent in in, in addressing some of those concerns already. Uh, one thing I did want to address tonight uh, that wasn't covered by some of the other speakers uh, does pertain to the discussion uh, in the category of primary residents hosted. Uh, and this actually typically refers to the discussion at the uh, workshop earlier this A couple questions that were brought up. One was um, the fact that we, we really still don't know the number of hosted versus unhosted uh, short-term rentals in the community. At this point, it's still a guess based on um, some, I guess, superficial uh, screening of what may be out there. And uh, in addition to that, as the, uh, as the discussion went and some of the comments were addressing this, is there, there was a difficulty in discerning whether or not the uh, contracted analytics company can actually discern between a hosted or an unhosted stay. And uh, I think there was, um, someone was hoping to be able to look into that and maybe we can get that answer. And less of a minimum uh, stay would be able to be managed by the permitting process in that the numbers that, or the permit number that is assigned to the uh, host category can easily be encoded to address whether it is a hosted or unhosted stay. Uh, thereby, when that number comes across Ben's desk as a possible uh, uh, rental, short-term rental that is in violation of that minimum, he would then see that, oh, that's a code coded as a hosted short-term stay, that is not a problem. So these are just some of the solutions that we're hoping will be addressed and uh, or, or considered. And likewise, we're still waiting for the answer of how many um, rentals, short-term rentals have been discovered within the town. So I'll leave it at that and hope uh, maybe a couple of those may be uh, addressed in your replies. Thank you. 
Thanks very much. Go ahead, Penny. I'm set. Nope. Oh, I thought you were going to answer something. Um, no. Are there any other folks that wish to speak at this point? Um, I see Craig's hand raised. Again, I'm just going to remind folks where the intention is to vote on whether or not to send this to public hearing. Um, so really would like to try and um, not get all of the comments that I assume we're going to also be hearing in that public hearing unless there's something very specific to whether or not we should be referring this to public hearing tonight. So go ahead, Craig, um, Matt, I'll open up your mic. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yep, name yes, and address, please. Craig Cooper, 150 Ocean House Road. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and I will keep my comments short because I'm sure you'll be hearing from me at the uh, public hearing and I appreciate what you said earlier about that. Um, I, uh, my comments, that I did want to make was, uh, unfortunately, I was unable to uh, speak during the uh, your, your workshop um, last week. I missed the uh, public comment of that because I was engrossed in the fact that our capital in Washington, D.C. was under siege at that time. And I was watching that on television when I realized it had gone past seven o'clock and that you were having your workshop. So I'm literally just commenting that I wanted to let you know that I came back in at about 7.15, 7.20 after the public comment, watched all the process that you all went through and discussed at your workshop. And you, most of you have received a number of emails and heard from me over the last year or so. It was a very, it was a very good thing after what I was watching and witnessing in Washington DC to watch all of you doing your public service and, be, and watching democracy working uh, and, and what you're doing tonight as well. And I want to applaud you for that. And I do have issues with this short-term rental. You know most of them, and I will be talking at the public hearing. That's really all I wanted to say this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. I appreciate that. Uh, I know the council does as well. Um, any other speakers for this evening uh, on this item? I don't see any hands raised. Going once, going twice. Okay. Uh, is there a motion from the council to refer the uh, draft uh, short-term rental ordinance changes to a public hearing set for Monday, February 8th, 2021 at 7 p.m.? So moved. Councilors second. Jordan, Caitlin first and Penny second. Any discussion? Councilor Devereaux. Uh, would you mind just explain for everyone what the process is, Councillor Garvin, um, with the next meeting, if we decide uh, once, once we listen to everybody's yep. concerns? Yeah, uh, thank you. I'll, I'll relay out the timeline that we talked about at our workshop last week. Um, so again, as I you know, stated at the beginning of this agenda item, the purpose of this is to procedurally refer this to a public hearing. Public hearing next month would be um, open for all public comment on the issue. Um, while the time uh, that each person is allotted is limited to three minutes, uh, public hearing rules state that whomever wants to speak can speak and there's no limit to the time uh, on a public hearing. Um, so, uh, you know, we've certainly had plenty of public hearings that run, run awfully long. Um, I will say, you know, the council has obviously heard a tremendous amount of input from the community. Um, many of the folks that are on this call, I think most, um, most of the folks' opinions and uh, ideas that have been brought forward are well known, um, but we certainly don't discourage anybody from um, speaking uh, on the item at the public hearing. Um, with most items of major significance, uh, which I would consider this one to be, um, we tend to not vote on the item immediately following the public hearing. So we usually then vote on the item at our next regularly scheduled meeting, which in this case would be our March meeting. So we would uh, have the public hearing on the 8th, uh, take all of that in. Um, if there are uh, recommendations to further change or tweak um, the language, we can either do that as part of the meeting uh, or bring that forward at the next meeting um, and offer up amendments as part of that process. I would say if, if they were looking like, if, if, if there was uh, a direction that the council seemed to be looking to make 
significant changes, which I, I'll be honest, I don't expect, but if there were significant changes that were gonna be offered up, we might wanna have a workshop meeting to discuss those before bringing those back to um, a final vote. So uh, rather than trying to author those types of changes on the fly. Um, at the March meeting, we would vote on, you know, whatever that final version is. And if approved, uh, the language that we've discussed would have these changes take effect July 1, 2021. So um, that normally an ordinance goes into effect 30 days after approval. Uh, this would have a, a 90 plus day uh, lead in time before taking effect. The idea being that um, it gives operators um, the amount of time to make any necessary adjustments. Um, we'll be expiring all of the existing short-term rental permits that are out there today uh, to line them up to that half year calendar schedule. Um, and then everybody would have to um, re-up for their permits starting January 1 of 2022. Um, is there any details, Council Devereaux, that I left out of that or that you can think of? Anything I missed? No, that sounds good. I, I just um, think people should know um, if we vote on it in, um, in March, then it takes effect in July. And even if it got kicked to an April vote, my guess is it would still take effect in July, correct? It could. Uh, it, it would be left to the termination of the council, but I, I mean, yeah, it's feasible, yeah. Thank you. Any other, yep. Any other discussion or comments? Seeing none, um, we'll call the question. All those in favor of advancing this item to the public hearing? Uh, Deb, could you call the roll, please? Councilor Boucher? Yes. Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? Yes. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councilor Noonan? Yes. Chairman Garvin? Yes. The motion carries. Um, I just want to, again, as I have a number of times before, thank everybody for you know the continued comments that they're bringing forward. Um, I, I don't want anybody to take me trying to move this along as um, not appreciating your input or anything. Um, and I, I know we look forward to hearing more from folks leading up to and at the public hearing. So thanks very much uh, for everybody that's reached out and uh, to those that I know will continue to do so. Um, the next item corresponds with this. It's um, to refer the draft uh, changes um, that were uh, recommended to us by the planning board um, for uh, amending the comprehensive plan to align um, with the short-term rental ordinance changes. Uh, is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak on this item? Seeing no hands raised. Is there uh, any counselor that would like to make a motion to set this item to a public hearing also on Monday, February 8th? Councilor Penny Jordan. Um, I move that we uh, send item blah, 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 uh, 35 2021 to public hearing on February 8th, 2021. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilor Noonan. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, Deb, could you call the roll for this one, please? Councilor Boucher? Yes. Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? Yes. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councilor Noonan? Yes. Chairman Garvin? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Um, the next items, though, not presented. Uh, as such, I'm going to actually uh, ask, uh, is there any interest in moving items number 36-2021 through 40-2021 through as a consent ag agenda? These are all items. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, not 40. Uh, right. Uh, 39. Nope. Hold on. I messed this up. 
I think that makes sense. You, you, you are in the right ballpark, Mr. Chairman. I think it's uh, 38. 30, sorry, I skipped yeah, the page. 36, 37, and 38. I, 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 yeah, 36, 37, and 38, which are all to refer um, items to uh, uh, public hearings on February 8th. So we have a number of things that have come back that have been ordinance and planning board um, cleanup stuff, and we need to have a public hearing on them. So 36 is uh, planning board's recommend recommendation on fence amendments, 37 is recommendation on town farm district parking and 38 is uh, supervision of the bottle shed and recycling center, um, the ordinance committee recommendation for that. So um, does anybody object to moving these as a consent agenda? I see no objection. Is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak on any of these three items before we vote on moving them to a public hearing? Uh, Tim Trichimowitz, Matt will might open up your mic and just give us your name and address, please, Tim. Hi, uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Got you loud and clear, Tim, thanks. Excellent, uh, thank you guys. Uh, really quickly, my name is Tim Trichimowitz. I live at One Granite Ridge Road. I am also the um, new chairperson of the recycling committee uh, with regard to the um, <clears throat> Ordinance 38, um, we just want to let the uh, council know that as a, a committee it was brought up to us um, back on our last meeting, which was Thursday, and um, unanimously felt that it was uh, a perfect fit for our committee and uh, we'd love to move forward assuming the town um, uh, meetings and um, everything goes through, you know, the, the process, but um, we really were excited about the opportunity to be involved with that. Thank you. Thanks, Tim, and congratulations on your appointment as chair and appreciate your service on that committee. Thank you. Um, any other public comment on any of these three items? Seeing none, uh, is there a motion to move these three items to public hearing on February 8th, 2021? So moved. Moved by Councilor Boucher, is there a second? Second. Second by Councilor Devereaux, is there any discussion? Seeing none, Deb, could you call the roll please? Councilor Boucher? Yes. Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? Yes. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councilor Noonan? Yes. Chairman Garvin? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Um, so the next item is number 39-2021, two uh, traffic and parking related uh, ordinance recommendations. Um, we're looking to refer these to a workshop, uh, to a future workshop. Um, is there anybody from the public that would like to speak on these items? Uh, we've got, it's, uh, Parking amendments to Kettle Cove across the beach and Seaview Avenue, Glen Avenue um, are the two that we're referencing here. Um, I see Tom Kolka's hand raised. Tom, when Matt opens up your mic, if you could just give name and address before your comments, please. Uh, Should be good to go ahead, Tom. Tom. Yep, Thank go you. ahead. Uh, my name's Tom Mikolka. I live at uh, Four Mountain View Road. Thank you very much for your time. I'm going to just take a little time here uh, to represent some work that's been done by the neighborhood to address some concerns in the Cliff House Beach area, uh, resulting in the Seaview Ave and Glen Ave amendment recommended by the Ordinance Committee. Um, for those of you are, who are unfamiliar, uh, uh, Cliff House Beach is a town owned property down the Seaview Ave. If you haven't been there, you should check it out. It's a pretty nice little piece of uh, Maine. A small little pocket beach that's all rock at high tide and can be sandy at mid to low tide, especially in the summertime. Um, little history between 2017 and 2019, the neighborhood uh, and the town worked together to address some overuse by dog owners. Uh, a, a neighborhood survey and the town with some town input resulted in defining dog hours from May to October, uh, and it worked really well. It was a really great solution. It really worked uh, to kind of give dog owners a place to take their dogs, but then give people a place to go um, if they're not fans of dogs. So uh, it kind of uh, fast forward to now, uh, 
after years of rising use of Cliffs Half Beach because um, it became kind of people became aware of it on social media. This summer, it really reached a tipping point with very heavy use and traffic, uh, resulting in safety and neighborhood character concerns and overuse of the beach. Yes, COVID has something to do with it, but it was a trend that we had been seeing for three or four years, definitely spiked this year because of, of people looking for places to go. Um, so we got together again, uh, put a survey together in partnership with um, first the Conservation Committee, and then we discussed it further with the Ordinance Committee where we had several discussions. Um, so briefly, uh, we sent out a survey to 496 neighbors, 133 responded, 37 streets were included, so a pretty wide swath around the footprint of Cliff House Beach. And we had over 70 pages of comments, which took a long time to read through. Um, a lot of people had some opinions on this. The key takeaways that are pertinent with the recommendation from the Ordinance Committee were um, 80, 82% agreed that the increase in people in traffic had really started to change neighborhood character. 76% um, of these people said they started avoiding the beach because it was just too overcrowded and they weren't taking their family down uh, to the beach anymore. When we asked about solutions, 82% agreed that resident only restrictions from May to October might help with parking. Um, and so that was uh, something that the neighbors uh, supported and we discussed with the ordinance committee. So we support the recommended changes to the parking on Seaview and Glen Ave and hope it addresses the safety and the small park overuse concerns that the, that the neighbors have and that we all have. Um, of course, if, if these changes don't have the intended effect or have other unintended effects, uh, we'll return to those and, uh, and come back uh, to the committees and to the town council to discuss. So look forward to the, to the workshop, Jamie, um, but definitely a lot of us are still interested and think there's some good ideas that have been floated for the solutions uh, to the problem that we've seen down there over the past several years. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks so much, Tom. Appreciate uh, that. And thanks to uh, all the work of folks in the neighborhood that are working to try and find a solution down there too. Um, is there anyone else that wanted to speak on this one? I don't see any hands. Um, is there a motion to refer uh, this item to our next available workshop? So moved. So moved. Moved by Councillor Penny Jordan, seconded by Councillor Gabrielson. Is there any discussion? I have a question. Councillor Penny Jordan, yep. Um, what um, workshop would target a workshop in February? I think we have one scheduled for the first Monday in February, the yep. first, actually the yep. first. Um, so uh, that, that would be when I would anticipate this being, but. Okay, good, thank you. And you know, just to speak about timing for these as well, obviously there's a seasonal sensitivity to try and have this moved along. So, um, uh, you know, the council's aware of that and, and would be working towards that objective uh, as far as getting this implemented. So any other discussion from the council before the vote? Seeing none, Deborah? Council Boucher? Yes. Councillor Devereaux? Yes. Councillor Gabrielson? Yes. Councillor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councillor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councillor Noonan? Yes. Chairman Garvin? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next is item number 40-2021, the Ordinance Committee recommendation regarding uh, daycare regulations. Uh, back in October, the Council had referred to the Ordinance Committee uh, review and recommendation um, for review and recommendation, the site plan review process to assess whether there should be a modified review process for child care facilities and related businesses based on business size and impact. The Ordinance Committee did review those regulations at meetings in November and December and voted at their December meeting uh, unanimously to make no change. So is there a motion, is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak on this item? I don't see any hands raised. Um, so is there a motion to uh, accept the, recommend, the recommendation of the ordinance committee that we make no change to the existing daycare regulations? So 
So moved. So moved. Yeah. Moved by Councillor Noonan, seconded by Councillor Penny Jordan. Any discussion? Seeing none. Deb, can you call the vote, please? Councillor Boucher? Yes. Councillor Devereaux? Yes. Councillor Gabrielson? Yes. Councillor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councillor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Council Noonan? Yes. Chairman Garvin? Yes. And your motion carries. Thank you very much. Our last item on the agenda for this evening is number 41-2021, the recommendations of the Appointments Committee to fill uh, two, uh, I'm sorry, three remaining open slots on our um, citizen committees, uh, for one for Board of Assessment Review, one for Fort Williams Park Committee, and one for the Recycling Committee. Uh, is there anybody from the public that would uh, like to speak on this item? Seeing none, uh, Councilor Devereaux, did you want to introduce these three um, volunteers? Thank you, Councilor um, Garvin. However, um, Councilor- Oh, it's, Ca it's Councilor Boucher. Boucher. Yeah, I <laughs> totally forgot that we changed assignments there. <laughs> Councillor Boucher, would you like to introduce these three wonderful volunteers? Thank you. Yeah, we Sorry had quite a <laughs> we had quite a bit of interest in a couple of the committees. So the Fort Williams Park Committee definitely had um, ten or eleven applicants. So we thank everyone for their interest and their willingness to serve the community. It was wonderful to meet and interview so many of you. Um, so the three that we've chosen, Anne for the Board of Assessment Review has experience doing similar work in New Hampshire and I think she'd really be an asset to that um, board. For Fort Williams Park Committee, we have John Deanstag. And so he has experience in marketing and logistics and um, all sorts of things that I think could be really beneficial to the park, especially in context of the musical festivals this, this year. So. We're excited to have him on the team. And then Stephanie Austin for the Recycling Committee. Again, another wonderful volunteer who um, is really anxious to get started on sustainability work and get involved in the community. So we're very lucky to have so many just wonderfully qualified citizens here. So thank you very much. And I'll have to break the, the habit of uh, remembering that Council Devereaux changed assignments. So um, and thank you most especially to the um, folks, not only uh, who were selected here, but also everybody that expressed interest. Um, the council is grateful for anyone uh, who is willing to donate their time and talent to these these uh, committees. And so we appreciate that. Um, and I just wanted are, to add, we yep, still have an opening on the personnel advisory committee. So we'll continue to look for a candidate for that. Thank you. Um, is there any other discussion? Seeing none, is there a motion to approve uh, these appointments to these three committees? Council Boucher, do you want to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Is there a second? second. Council Devereaux, for old time's sake. Uh, is there any discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, Devereaux, could you read the roll call, please? Council Boucher? Yes. Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? Yes. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councilor Noonan? Yes. Chairman Garvin? Yes. And your motion carries. Thank you. That's the conclusion of our regular agenda. Is there anybody still uh, remaining of which there are five folks that would like to speak to anything that was not on tonight's agenda? Seeing none, is there a motion to adjourn? Oh, Mr. Matt, Chairman, do you want to add something before we do? If I if I may, please, Mr. Chairman, I, I, please I just uh, want to let you know in your inboxes uh, this evening, you will receive uh, uh, with great thanks to Council Boucher, uh, your workshop agenda items for tomorrow evening with the council goals. So uh, you should have that there and we'll have that posted uh, uh, shortly. And then uh, also looking to have a joint workshop with the school board for the presentation of the annual audit. Uh, we've met with the auditors last week and they they are ready to go. I was trying to get it in for next week uh, with the joint meeting on the 20th, uh, but they were unavailable that evening, but I didn't know if February 10th would work uh, for the council, if you could put that on your dance card and uh, we'd like to have a workshop that evening so they could go over the results of the annual audit. 
So Wednesday, February 10th, Matt? If that's if that's available. Uh, looks good for me. Is there anybody that has a conflict? Not at this moment. I might, because our civil rights committee tends to meet every two weeks. However, we may be able to push it to um, Thursday if that's the day that works for the school. Okay. What time is it also at seven or? So, yeah, so typically at 6.45, 7 o'clock. Okay. Okay. Um, no other conflicts though? Is it, thank, anybody? Th thank you. Okay. So February 10th at seven o'clock, we'll plan for that. Thank you, Matt. And you. did you say there was something else too? Or no, no you did just the goals. Those, just those yeah, two okay. items, the goals yeah, and, okay. uh, and we'll have that. And then after the February 1st, we'll have a presentation regarding uh, the Kettle Cove uh, proposed boat launch. And so that may be an opportunity that evening for uh, coastal issues to have uh, Kettle Cove and, uh, and, and uh, Glen Avenue conversation as well. Okay. Um, does anybody else have anything else they want to add before we have a motion to adjourn? Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn? I move we adjourn. Moved by Councilor Penny Jordan. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilor Caitlin Jordan. Is there any discussion? Seeing none. Deb, one last time, please. Councilor Boucher? Yes. Councilor Devereaux? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? Councillor Caitlin Jordan? Yes. Councillor Penelope Jordan? Yes. Councillor Noonan? Yes. And Chair McGarvin? Yes. Thanks very much, everybody. Uh, I'll uh, see you at our workshop. Thanks. Thanks. Take care. Good night.